All right, we've officially hit the halfway point to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Let's talk about this third episode. So we finally reached episode three of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney Plus. As I just said, it's pretty crazy that we're already at the midway point of this series because it's only six episodes long. So things definitely got to start picking up. I feel. If you enjoy these weekly discussions about the Falcon and Winter Soldier and all the other stuff on my channel as well, make sure you have a like on the video and also subscribe so you're up to date with all of those videos when they do drop because I drop a lot of content. Many interesting developments in the last episode. We got the reveal of Isaiah Bradley within the MCU, and then we also had a little bit of talk about the Power Broker as well. And then there was of course the tensions between Sam Bucky and John Walker and Battlestar as they take on the Flag Smashers. And it seems like in a last-ditch effort to get some info, they're going to go talk to Baron Zemo, and that's where we left off leading into this episode. This episode probably is my favorite out of the three so far. It gave me all the things that I really wanted out of this show, the espionage thriller that I was expecting going in. Bringing back Baron Zemo in the show, I think, really was a nice boost to this series because Daniel Brohl is doing such a great job as the character. I love Zemo. He's probably one of my favorite MCU villains to this point. We haven't seen him since Captain America Civil War when he was about to shoot himself when he was talking to T'Challa. But it's fantastic when he shows up on screen as Sam and Bucky go to visit him in his prison cell in Germany. The first thing he does is he tries to recite the words to try and turn Bucky back into the Winter Soldier and control him. Thankfully they don't work. But it did make me wonder how they were going to get Baron Zemo out of this prison. And Bucky goes and just stages this whole prison break style thing to get Zemo out of there. I thought it was really well done. It literally reminded me of the series Prison Break but the bulk of the episode of revolving around Sam, Bucky, and Zemo going on this kind of covert mission undercover all the way to Madripoor. We gotta talk about Madripoor a little bit as well. That was so fantastic. I love that undercover spy thriller espionage style. It reminded me of, you know, stuff like The Winter Soldier. But talking more about Madripoor, that was really cool to me as a fan of the comic books because Madripoor, for the most part in Marvel Comics, it's kind of associated a lot with the X-Men, which they're not introduced in the MCU. So I'm hoping maybe this is kind of like a backdoor introduction to Madripoor and then we'll get some X-Men later on because we don't get any X-Men here. This entire undercover mission where Zemo kind of leads the way and Sam and Bucky both have to be in disguise in a sense as Sam has to dress up as a completely different person and Bucky has to act like he's still the Winter Soldier and he's being controlled by Zemo which he does not enjoy whatsoever. Especially when he has to start beating up everybody inside of this club. This series especially the last two episodes is really hyping up the power broker in the MCU. We don't get him in this episode but we do get the breadcrumb trail leading to the power broker as we first meet up with this woman named Selby in Madripoor and it's a very tense situation which is only enhanced when Sam's cover is blown because his sister Sarah calls him on the phone and then they just have to shoot and fight their way out of there and there's a bounty on their head now because they killed Selby. As they're running away from all the people trying to kill them, we do get a surprise appearance of Sharon Carter. She finally makes her appearance in this show. We also haven't seen her since Captain America Civil War. We did get that little tidbit seeing her on the screen as she was someone that was dusted, but in between that time she was also on the run, of course, after Civil War, and she settled in Madripoor, I guess. I guess that's an ironic coincidence. As someone who's a big fan of Sharon Carter in the comics, I don't think they ever really did a great job with her in the MCU up until this point, but I think they did a really great job in this episode fleshing her out a little bit more. She seemed to become a much more serious character, a much darker character, more fleshed out I should say and we get to see that she's like a black market dealer for stuff like paintings and it seems like she's going to actually help out with the mission in exchange for a pardon. She actually helps them set up this meeting with this other guy on the breadcrumb trail to the power broker Wilfred Nagel inside of these shipping containers a really sketchy area for a meeting and I think they kind of realize that as it's going on but they're threatening him talking to him about everything when it comes to Carly Morenthau and all the 20 different vials that she stole from him and the super soldier serum. As they're all having this conversation inside of these shipping containers a bunch of good goons show up and thankfully Sharon Carter is there to save the day. She kicks all of their asses. I thought it was a really awesome scene. Like this is the stuff I wanted to see from Sharon Carter more in the MCU before they kind of threw her away after Civil War. She's badass and she just is really brutal in all of her fight techniques. After everything went down in the shipping container, Baron Zemo just shoots the guy, kills him in cold blood. We see his dead body on the floor. That was kind of shocking as well. But then the, everything explodes. A big action scene. The rest of it unfolds. We see Baron Zemo. He puts on the iconic purple mask that we all love. I thought at this point this meant that Sharon, Sam, and Bucky were going to split off and Zemo is going to go off and be the villain but to my surprise he actually took out the rest of the bad guys there and he rendezvoused back with everybody and got in the car to their next destination. So that was kind of nice that they're still on this mission to find out the power broker and all that stuff with the super soldier serum. I kind of forgot to mention because they kind of just bookend both the beginning and the end of the episode. We see scenes with John Walker and Battlestar. They kind of break into the place where the flag smashes were in the last episode and it doesn't really go all that well. It seems like John Walker is like really on edge and he's on the point of being unhinged 
unhinged. Then at the tail end of the episode, we see John Walker and Battlestar going back to where Zemo is held prisoner. They realize that Sam and Bucky was there and it's probably the reason why he was broken out in the first place. And it seems like they're crafting this sort of plan, more so John Walker than Battlestar, to kind of just go off the record and kind of try and take out Sam and Bucky. That's at least what it seemed like to me. Personally, I'm not like a really big fan of these two characters. I definitely think they're supposed to be the villains, more so than Carly Morgenthau and the rest of the Flag Smashers. At least Carly Morgenthau, at least like she seems like she kind of has the right idea. She just has a really bad method of trying to execute like a good thing. But these people, John Walker and Battlestar, they just seem downright bad for the most part. More so John Walker than Battlestar. The big final wrinkle in the end of the episode actually is really fun as well as we see Bucky is led down this corridor and he runs into a woman from Wakanda. And obviously they want Baron Zemo since they killed T'Chaka. So I don't know where that's going to play out, what kind of deals they're going to make because Bucky already has a deal with Zemo. Is Bucky going to make a deal with the people from Wakanda to give them Zemo? Because... I don't know. There's a lot of threads to be going there. I don't know, but I'm really, I really like this episode. I thought it was a really fun overall episode. I think it's the best elements of the stuff I really wanted, the espionage thriller kind of stuff. But leave me in the comments down below. What did you think of this episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier? Were you a fan of what happened? I'd also like to know what you think is going to happen next. Whether you think, you know, when it comes to Zemo, Carly Morgenthau, and the Flag Smashers, John Walker, and etc. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. So make sure you leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. I like to talk about all things movies and TV with you guys down there. Thank you so much for checking my reviews, though. I really appreciate it. Make sure to like it, subscribe button. We'll keep the reviews, show actions, unboxings, and more. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.